Hey everyone, Ryan Young, Kama Jiu Jitsu. Hope you're doing well. So one of the things that I've talked about many times has to do with bullying. And uh, there's this one incident that happened. Actually, my neighbor across the street came and knocked on my door to tell me about it. And simultaneously, one of my students actually sent me a video clip of what happened. The students you see in this video are North Capel Middle School students. The 14-year-old who was assaulted tells us he was sitting in the cafeteria where he normally sits and he was held in a chokehold while everyone just watched. So this happened in Capel, Texas. And Capel is a suburb of Dallas. And there's a uh, there's a kid who was sitting at what looked like his lunch table. Another kid tells him to get off the chair and he says, no, I've been sitting here. And so the, the other kid goes to proceed to grab his neck, um, kind of like uh, like you're gonna do a rear naked choke, but he didn't do a choke. Uh, but he just, he grabbed him and he walked off and basically pulled pulled him off the chair by his head, which was not cool. And why it happened, I don't know. I mean, I don't have anything, any footage that leads up to what we saw. And you need to consider all the angles of a story. But at any rate, assuming this was the angle of the story, yeah, a kid should know how to get out of that. And you know, one of the things with bullies is that they're like criminals. Uh, I'm not saying they are criminals, but the the conduct is very much like criminals in that they attack somebody who they think will not fight back or they attack someone who they think is smaller and is incapable of fighting back. You know, not only not will not fight back, but is incapable of fighting back. One of the things that we teach at Kama Jiu Jitsu is we teach Jiu Jitsu in the self-defense style. You know, competition is fun. In fact, I just did a video talking about it, but it is not necessarily self-defense. Any, any, any more than, say, uh, a kid playing football is self-defense. I mean, he can injure someone. You know, think of spearing your opponent, right? You put your helmet right in their face. That'll hurt them. That'll put the, kid, the other kid in the hospital. But it's not necessarily a martial art. So what this neighbor did was came across and asked, hey, you know, can you help me out? I've got a, either a 12 or 13-year-old son. I'd like to have him learn jiu-jitsu and I'm so, I said yeah of course I'd love to and this particular the student who sent me the video is also you know and I, and I want to talk about race here but you know they're part of the Indian community not American Indian India Indian community and and they're a very tight-knit group you know so I live in one part of one one suburb of Dallas has happened another one in Coppell and I guess word gets around pretty quick so they're they're kind of up in arms about it and you know, they want to create even more rules uh, for schools and administrators and all that so that this doesn't happen again. The problem is, just like with tournament jujitsu, you cannot create more rules thinking that you're going to create greater safety. Uh, you know, you may create greater safety in a tournament, perhaps. Um, in fact, I'll give you an example. Uh, one of my uh, ladies just competed in a, in a tournament and she stood up and the other girl tried to choke her, you know, playing the old, you know, being like old koala bear on a tree, right? Um, you know, my, my competitor, she's standing up and the other girl came up with her and was hugging her, had a closed guard and was trying to do the choke. You know, the other girl's a very good competitor, but she'd be horrible in a self-defense situation. But she does that because the rules say you can do it and it explicitly puts the person who actually is in charge of the situation at the moment, meaning the one who's on their feet, it says they cannot slam their opponent. Now, if you put more rules on a school and just try to make it to where you say there's a zero tolerance policy with regard to fighting, then what you do is you penalize the kid, you penalize the victim, but without punishing the the actual bully you know they're just saying zero tolerance means that if you fight back you're now in trouble which means you're going to get some kind of suspension which this school did curiously enough i think he got three days of in-school suspension for being the f uh, victim sorry that irks me I was going to cuss but you know we try to keep this channel since i know there are younger children that watch it now i can't swear <sighs> anyway so the kid who was a victim the one who did nothing got suspended 
for three days as well. And I think some of you have seen an older video I did with one of my students who got into a fight. You know, they had locked him in a, in the bathroom at school pretty much where 30 of them or so <laughs> just surrounded him. He was all by himself and made him fight this one dude. Anyway, the, that video went pretty viral within their school and he got suspended. I think he got one week in school and two days or so out of school, out, you know, out of the school suspended. The other kid got more, but still, the fact that the victim gets suspended for fighting back is, it's asinine and it's dumb. But anyway, I tell my kids and I tell the kids that I teach, <clears throat> you need to fight back because if you do not, you cannot rely on the teacher, the principal, or anybody to make it so it won't happen. You just need to fight back because these bullies are cowards and as soon as they realize that they bit off more than they can chew with your child, then they won't get bothered again. Now, there may be a situation where other kids go, hey, you know, I saw you had some problems with my friend and if you got problems with my friend, you have problems with me, so you're gonna have to deal with me now. <sighs> so be it, let's go, right? That's the way it's gotta be. Because if you don't, then there's always going to be another. But eventually, you deal with the bull, you know, the head bully. And once that happens, everybody else falls in line. And that's one thing I learned as a kid, too. I just walk up to the biggest one, and I would just punch him, right? And this is before I knew jiu-jitsu. But I knew that if I didn't take out the biggest, baddest one, then I would be getting trouble for a long, long, long time. So when I was younger, you know, I was... You know, I grew up in a pretty rough lower middle class neighborhood. So I, I grew up having to fight and I, I wasn't afraid of it. And so you go to a prep school and you know, you have uh, you know, rich kids that are, you know, that, that are used to talking things out. Um, all of a sudden, you know, having to be confronted with somebody who's willing to fight, then things change a little bit. But the thing is though, you can't just fight because when you do then, you know, fists go flying and injuries happen and sometimes that's really not what you want you just want to get the kid to stop and sometimes the way you get him to stop is just simply show that he doesn't need to do it and if he does do it then there will be more where that came from All right but one of the best things about gracie jiu-jitsu is that you can always moderate the amount of force that you use on a, on, a, on a person you don't need to dislocate their shoulder you don't need to choke them out till they pass out um you don't need to, to break an arm, you don't need to break a wrist, you don't need to slam them down, but you can if you need to. And that's one of the best things about jiu-jitsu. And that's why I think jiu-jitsu is better than any other martial art. You know, one of the things, uh, one of my students, um, we were doing a little bit of sparring, you know, closing the distance and clinching and all that, and, and she did Taekwondo in the past. And it just kind of reminded me about how, you know, I, I know tremendous athletes that are Taekwondo artists. But it's funny because the rules that they put in there, <laughs> you know, so let's say your kid does Taekwondo and they're really good at it and they're really good at the kicks, right? But you can't punch the face. So if they're, if they're in a fight, they automatically keep their hands low. And I see it all the time. And they're not protecting their face. <clears throat> because why? In a Taekwondo match, you can only punch the chest. You, or the shoulders, whatever, but you cannot punch the face. But the curious thing is that you can kick him in the head, right? Which is, so if, 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 I, if my kid did Taekwondo, there's a good chance that he might get punched in the face. At the same time, if he can get the first strike off, there's a good chance he'll kick the other kid in the head. Neither of them are good outcomes, right? I'd much rather he deal with the punch, to, to clear the punch, to get it for a clinch, protect himself in the clinch, take the other kid down, pin him down and hold him down and just wait until somebody comes to help and then get up, dust off. Are you okay? Are you okay? All right, shake hands and don't let this happen again, right? Um, that type of thing. That's what I'm in support of. And that's really what I grew up with. And bullies didn't stay bullies for long when I was growing up because at some point in time, um, a, a kid who could fight back and would fight back um, came across their path and, and then it ended that way. And that's really the best way to grow up, you know? And that's one of the best things about jujitsu is that you think you're some badass guy and then there's always somebody better. Or it could be you are the baddest guy, you baddest guy, and then you make a mistake and you get caught and you realize, dang it, you know, I don't own everybody here, right? And that's what keeps most jujitsu practitioners very humble, right? What's that saying? Uh, carry a big stick when you walk, but, you know, carry it softly. Um, something like that.
anyway I hope this video was illuminating to you about the whole bully bully situation and that you know getting getting the administrators and the town councils and the, the school board members and all that to get involved doesn't really fix the matter uh, all it does is just lay more rules on top making making your kids experience in school less pleasant right just like in society right the freer we are in society the happier we are and <clears throat> the less free we are the less happy that we are and the same thing happens in school too and let's make everybody happy again right and we can do it through jujitsu anyway that's all i got for you come visit us at one of our locations in irvine california in flower mound texas or in austin texas or you can come see us at kama jujitsu online.com for master dave kama's lesson plans on how we teach our students if you're not anywhere near us you know this that's the next best thing uh, the next best, best thing to being here at one of our studios is having us on your phone right here, helping you train. Anyway, that's all I got for you. Take care. Happy training. Bye now.